Hello everyone and welcome to the final and the most important round of the FIDE Chess.com Grand Swiss. Uh, it's uh, Grigori Oparin, a Russian Grandmaster versus Alireza Firuzja, who is leading the tournament. Uh, and, uh, well, basically he only needs a draw to qualify for the tournament. But if he wins the game, uh, he could also uh, easily win the win the entire tournament. Uh, although when the, um, uh, you know, a, a spot in the candidates is on the line, you don't really care all that much about winning the tournament or, you know, uh, gaining a, a few rating points. Uh, even... Uh, though after Alireza's yesterday's win uh, uh, against the David Howell, uh, he again uh, reclaims uh, the world number four spot uh, in front of Yanni Pomnici. Uh, but uh, Grigori Oparin also has a chance to uh, qualify for the candidates, and he's a very, very tough opponent. Uh, so far, he has not lost a single game. Firuja, as you've seen, um, has lost that one to Fabiano Caruana. But uh, also, Oparin did not face Fabi in this tournament because he started very slow. Uh, he got, uh, got quite a lot of draws, and then he started piling up wins uh, so he avoided Fabi uh, in the entire tournament uh, but uh, in order uh, for you two guys to really understand this here are uh, some of the things that could happen so who will qualify for the candidates this is a graphic from the uh, from the official stream so if uh, boards one and two draw and white wins the rest of the games uh, Alireza and Fabi will qualify for the candidates if boards one and two draw black wins the other games then Alireza and uh, Grigori Oparin here qualify for the candidates um, uh, you see the difference in Buchholz with Caruana is half a point. And if Firuja and Pretke wins, uh, then boards uh, three to seven or, and boards three to seven all draws, then uh, Firuja and Alexander Pretke qualify uh, for the uh, FIDE candidates tournament. And th these are only some uh, of the approximations. There are more of them, but uh, these are obviously the the most possible one so that being said let's see what happens here and how will uh they both approach this game so uh, Oparin could really use a win uh, and Alireza uh, is very very happy with a draw so Oparin with the white pieces opens with e4 we have e5 knight to f3 knight to c6 and bishop to b5 Oparin goes for the Rui Lopez and what do you play when you absolutely uh, have to <laughs> not lose the game uh, knight to f6 of course Alireza goes for the Berlin defense we have d3 Three, uh, no quick drawish lines here. We want to play an actual game. Bishop to c5, and now bishop captures on c6. We have d captures and opening castles. Uh, and now we often have this position. If you've been following uh, what's been happening in the chess world, we. Um, uh, we, we have this quite a lot and you have to defend the e5 pawn and you can do this uh, in a variety of ways you can play queen e7 to defend it you can play bishop back to d6 to defend it you could bring the knight to d7 to defend it you could also pin the white knight with bishop to g4 so these are all viable options uh, Alireza chooses knight to d7 and now we have c3 preparing to strike in the center with the d4 we have castles and now d4 so nothing new here this has all been played before uh, d5 pawn is also attacked twice so bishop d6 nicely defends it and now bishop to g5 attacking the queen here so f6 defending uh this is one of the uh a uh, few uh, uh rare occasions where it's actually okay to play f6 uh bishop to h4 and now queen to e8 so now we're, we have unpinned we're gonna play put our queen to f7 and we're gonna have a very very enjoyable position so knight b to d2 uh and now uh, opening is uh a sort of playing a, a bit of uh, uh, mind games here because uh, alireza had this position himself with the white pieces against dimitri andreikin in the 2019 world blitz championship uh and queen to e6 was played here uh, by uh, by andreikin and alireza won that game very nicely but here uh, even though there are a couple of other moves for example queen here is uh, is a known move queen to f7 is a known move knight to b6 is a known move alireza plays a5 and it is now already as of move 11 that we have a complete completely new game he wants to get uh, some um, pawn moves on the queen side maybe a4 b5 then get the knight to b6 and have a very nice game uh, uh, so what can you do here queen to c2 white just continues development connects uh, his rooks and uh, now preparing maybe knight to c4 to, to go after this bishop so queen to f7 now stopping knight to c4 and also putting some pressure on this a2 pawn if this rook is ever centralized uh, well you're gonna lose that a2 pawn so bishop back to g3 uh, and now comes a4 and up until this point all of the moves were pretty pretty much blitzed out from uh, Oparin's perspective uh, Alireza did spend some time uh, and here is the first time that uh, Oparin uh, started thinking and he spent some 10 minutes on his next move you have to decide uh, whether b3 uh, is uh, is a good option here uh, because if you play something like rook f to e1 then maybe c5 comes and if d5 b5 and then black got pretty much what he wanted out of the position 
So opponent tries b3. Now the c4 square is defended and you are uh, ready to bring this knight uh, to c4. And uh, you could always capture here and trade off everything. For example, captures, 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 and captures. But uh, you can always do this. So it's not uh, something you need to rush. So instead, after b3, we have e captures on d4 by Alireza. Knight to c4 was coming. And you do not want to trade bishop for knight. You want to trade the bishop for bishop if possible. Uh, also made after some uh, 15 minutes of, of thinking. So here we have bishop captures on d6, c captures, and now knight captures on d4. Again, you have to decide between captures with the bishop and cap uh, captures with the pawn and captures with the knight. Uh, both, uh, you know, have their merits. Um, uh, opening decides to capture with the knight and now uh, you are trying to play against this d6 pawn for the moment at some point Alireza can probably just push d5 and trade it off but uh, still even though if this happens we can play captures captures again we, there will be this d5 pawn uh, that white can attack the knight uh, is a great blockading piece so if the pawn is ever on d5 we're gonna pile up on it and only now Alireza trades here we have captures captures rook captures on a1 rook captures on a1 and now d5 so uh, th there's nothing better. It's it's a very solid position. Uh, you, you you play the Berlin defense. If White doesn't try, uh, you know, for for something crazy, uh, you, you know, you can't really expect uh, you know things to be flying all over the place. So e captures on d5, and now not c captures, but rather queen captures. Of course, nicely centralizing the queen. And now we have two pawns each here, and uh, Alireza still has a bishop. So if the position opens up and this bishop uh, gains some momentum, could be very dangerous. But the, the knights are also very impressive. So knight to c4. Uh, we have knight to e5 offering a trade here. And you don't really gain anything by trading. If you just capture, or for example, f captures, you attack the knight, knight f3. For example, bishop to g4, now just threatening to win a lot of material. And if, for example, knight here, you can play rook d8. And you've solved all of black's uh, problems. Black has a very, very enjoyable position now. So we have knight to b6 by opening, going after the queen here. Queen back to d8, attacking the knight, and now knight captures captures on c8. So opening decides that the bishop, if uh, it comes alive, could be uh, a very formidable piece. So uh, queen captures on c8 and now knight to f5. And now we have this beautiful knight here. Of course, you're threatening knight to e7 check to win the queen. And uh, it's not easy to kick it away from there. Uh, g6, while it can be played at some point, uh, is uh, basically a weakening of, of your king's position. So first, just queen to e6, uh, keeping the queen centralized. And now rook to d1. Uh, if you go for something like rook to a7, which is always uh, a very nice idea, you know, you want to bring your rook to the 7th rank, we're just going to kick the knight away. And now uh, uh, you have to calculate whether this is possible for white, because if it is, you don't want to play that, but it's perfectly fine. For example, even if uh, we, we go for something like this, uh, the black king is perfectly safe here. Let's say queen d2 check, you can just play g5, and now if queen c2, going for something like queen captures on h7, just knight g6. And white has no compensation for the sacrificed piece. So what would happen if g6 is played probably something like knight back to d4 attacking the queen queen d5 and the black is perfectly fine here you can never capture on b7 uh, if you do just c5 and black wins so uh, no, no hope there. So instead of going for this very nice rook lift, the rook is remaneuvered over to d1. Now the d6 square is uh, looking very nice for, for white's pieces. And Alireza just brings the knight back. Knight to f7, uh, the d6 square is guarded. Knight to d4 attacking the queen. Queen to e7 and here knight to f5. Uh, and it was, uh, in fact, in this position, on move 26, that uh, Grigori Oparin and Alireza Firuja agreed to a draw, uh, as there is nothing more uh, to be done here. Uh, so, uh, and uh, what, what this means for, for the tournament standings is that Alireza, uh, it, it, we don't know if he won the tournament yet, but we do know that he qualified for the FIDE Candidates Tournament 2022. Uh, and that is, uh, well, that's an incredibly impressive achievement. Um, so we'll see uh, we'll see who, who will be the next one to qualify. Uh, Fabi has excellent chances if he wins his game. Even if he draws, he still has excellent chances, but we're going to discuss that in the... Uh, in the uh, other game that uh, Fabi is currently playing against Yu Yangi. So incredible achievement for, for Alireza. Uh, at 18 years old, uh, he qualifies for, for the candidates tournament. It's gonna be it's gonna be incredible. And it would be it would be a shame. Of course, it would be a shame for many strong players not to qualify, but Fabi's world number two, and uh, you know, you, you kinda expect Fabi. Uh, if he's not if he's not the challenger for for the title, at least he should maybe be in the candidates tournament. Uh, so we'll see what happens. We're going to discuss all the other options in some other games we show. Uh, but yeah, just wanted to, uh, you know, uh, uh, brief you guys 
Zin uh, Alireza has qualified for the FIDE Candidates Tournament 2022. Uh, inform your friends at the bar and the library. Uh, so yeah, that's the game. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, Berlin defense, uh, you know, never fails when you, when you, you know, just need to be safe. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Sasan Faiz, uh, Alessandro Atura, Tom Deralo, Micah Kennedy, and David Kimura for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing with the coverage of this exciting event, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.